Okay, I'm going to create a ring base for you. Now I've created a few videos, um, one showing uh, using scale masks, which we're still going to be using, and another one using scale masks and using booleans. So I've shown you a few different ways, but I just want to do another one quickly and um, show you how quick we can do this. So let's go and grab something like the um, cylinder 3D. I'm going to go straight into edit mode. Going to come down to our initialize, just turn the polyframes on so you can see what's going on. And we're going to take this and we're going to basically take this down to here. And I'm going to take this Z down to about 50% in here just to give me a ballpark. Actually, you know what, 25%. Okay, it just gives me a ballpark. Now, at the moment, this scene is not in a particular scale, it's just ZBrush centric. So if I come into my gizmo here, turn gizmo off and go sideways. Um, if I measure across the here, I just need to make this a Polymesh 3D first. So let's just make that Polymesh 3D. Okay, and if I measure across from here with this turned on, like this, you're going to see up here that you've just got a, it just says units. So like ZBrush looks at this as units, two units could be two millimeters, could be two inches, could be two foot, could be two miles. Um, so the way that ZBrush is sort of working this out is it just needs a number to be able to do all its calculations etc however we can override this and put it into using something like scale master so scale master will now convert this to a scene size now i just want to turn the floor on because i want to show you because some things do go wrong here uh going to go back to draw mode don't have to but i'm going to for clarity and i'm going to come down here and we're going to say right okay yeah millimeters i like millimeters they're good and i'm going to hit um set scene scale by the way just um to show you something if i go to gizmo and i center this here and i move this out of the middle of the scene i can come into here and i can go center sub tools to world boom go straight back which is always handy so now i've covered that now what i want to do now is i want to set this scene scale two millimeters because i've got it set there and i'm going to click set scene scale it's going to throw me up a little box saying what do you kind of want here do you want it in um centimeters you know is it going to be this is it 0 0.2 or two millimeters let's hit two millimeters okay now if i come out of this back to my scale and i measure across you're going to see that it is in millimeters okay which is cool but we want this to be about 16 millimeters so we're going to come down to here and you're going to click the slider to subtool size and this will give you the size here it should already be there but you can just if you change these numbers like i was to type oh let me just go back i was to type in here a different number like uh 10 or 12 or something then if i want to get it back to what it is at the moment i just click sliders to sub tool size and then it gives it to me back again so what i want to do now is i want to set the x x is across and y is up and z is the depth okay so i want to set this to 16. i want to set the z to 16 and that's it for now now i'm not going to change this y and the reason i'm not changing the y at the moment is because here it's locked slider the ratio so if i change this to five all these are going to change as well like that if i hit enter see so i'm going to first of all just set this to 16 by 16 hit enter which is going to give me a value of four by the way and now I'm just going to click resize subtool. And this is what we get. Now notice that the floor is now really small. Can you see the floor grid? So we need to just unify our scene to get that grid back. Let me just show you the measurement at the moment. So if I measure this now across here, you've got a size of 15.99998. Okay, this size should be round about four, which it is roughly, yeah four millimeters 3.9999 and i want to get this floor back and not alter the geometry really easy just come here zbrush scale unify boom done all our settings are still the same 
we haven't lost anything. So what I want to do now is I want to make this height five millimeters. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to turn off the ratio so it doesn't lock it. So if I change the value of Y, it's not going to change the value of X and Z. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to put it into five. I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to resize this. And you're going to notice now that it's gone up. So if I check across here, I should have 16 yeah and if i check here i now will have five and that's given me my ring base size so now what i need to do is i need to actually take away from the middle so i need to um, form an edge now i can use a boolean to do that and i can resize this tool and what i'm going to do first of all is take this and i'm going to duplicate it so we've got it there and now i'm going to just going to I'm actually going to make it different polygroup if you look they're both the same polygroups but I'm going to take this one and I'm going to make it a new polygroup now you can pre press ctrl w or you can go down to polygroups and you can go group visible like that okay and that will give you a different polygroup to this one okay so what I'll do now is I'll just scale this a little bit so I'm going to go into gizmo I'm going to center this so it's in the middle and I'm going to bring it down like this and I'm also going to give it some height as well. So here we go. So this is almost, we've now, what we've done here is we've created a mandrel which will cut through it. So let me just turn the floor off. So what I could do here is I could turn a live Boolean on, to come out of polyframe, and then I could hit the take away like that. So first of all, we need to just, I'm going to come back out of Boolean and I want to just get this tool to the right size without affecting this tool up here. So what I'm going to do is go down to my plugins and I'm going to turn off all. Now the reason I'm doing this is I don't want the other tool to change size as well. So I'm going to make sure that I uncheck all. And now I'm going to go slider subtool size so you can see what this active tool is. And we need to change this. So if I want a millimeter gap, on the 16 then I'll need to make it 14 because there's one millimeter one side one millimeter the other so let's make it 14 and in fact I can turn pro on at this size so 14 enter that should be good all right so now I can resize this tool. So because I haven't got all on, I'm going to click that and you're going to see it's gone down slightly. Now um, I've got that right size. I can come back into Boolean, I come back into this top tool and I'll just do another check. Let's just check across there, yeah, 1.19 millimeter. There we go, we have it. So we created that and we've got a live Boolean on this as well. So it's another way. And the great thing about this is you can go ahead and you can keep changing things. You know, you can keep changing the size if you want to with that mandrel in place. You know, if I wanted this at two millimeters, you know, I could come in here and I could go down to here and I could say, right, okay, let's give me Actually, it's two, isn't it? Um, 14, 15, 16. Okay, I could put this in at 12. Remember, I've got this ratio turned on, so when I hit the enter, that will change as well. Then I can resize this, and now I've got a two millimeter gap in here. So if I turn back the Boolean again, just turn that one, come back to that one, and go to my checking it. There we go, two millimeters. So using booleans gives you that flexibility. So hopefully that is uh, that's good as far as the booleans are concerned. Right, so I've showed you how we can create this boolean, but what about actually if we were to turn this into um, geometry and not have it just as a boolean here to be able to add subdivision levels and things like that. So obviously we could come in here and we could add subdivision levels to the, this. We could go in and divide this up. Um, Let's just turn Boolean off. 
you probably have to do a bit of clean up in here you need to add some edges or crease some stuff so I'll probably come in here and um, just add a crease to this then when I divide it I'm going to get a nice ring like this and then I'd need to do the same to this one I would need to crease this as well and need to divide this up like this and then if you went back into boolean you're going to get a much nicer cleaner mesh but we don't have to do that what we can do is we could actually use the U mesh and Z remesher to actually do a job for us so if I go back to this now to the basic um, geometry that we've got here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a U mesh of this so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a boolean mesh so it's going to appear up here so I'm just going to click it and this is what we've got now the thing about it is we've got triangles because it's kind of cut it all up now if I divide this it's going to go very very weird um, if I hit the divide button it's going to form all sort of creases because we've got triangles in it I could try creasing it and then doing it which would give me a, a slightly better result but it's still a little bit crappy so um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to do a conversion with this piece. I'm going to go down to Z Remesher and I'm going to say I want half the amount of polygons and I'm going to tell it to keep um, to detect the edges and to keep any creasing that's on here. Okay, and then I'm going to hit Z Remesh now and this is what we're going to get something that's pretty much perfect. You know, we've got nice tight edges there. Is creased if I start to subdivide this up I'm going to get really nice um, topology really nice subdivision levels in there and it works as a base and again if we come back and do our measurements now um, just turn the gizmo off and come across here we're going to have those settings that we put in there so everything's working as it should inside here so you can use the boolean and then you can actually use Z remesher to make that Poly make those polygons nice and clean especially in um, ZBrush 2019 where it keeps it actually detects edges you can also keep groups as well if you've got groups in here it would also keep the groups as well of course you can split the groups out by going to poly groups and then grouping by normals which is going to break this apart as well so hopefully that's a speedier way of creating these ring base meshes